Good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Tropical Outlook for Saturday the 26th of October. It is the second video of today. A little earlier I did a quick European update talking about the, the progress of the MJO and the prospects of a, a more negative trend in the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation and the implications that may have on Europe. So do check that out. It was recorded, like I say, a couple of hours ago. But uh, yeah, we do have the uh, live stream tomorrow at 4pm as always, so I hope you can join me for that. There will be a link in the description below today's video for, for the live tomorrow, so I hope you can um, uh, you know give up a little bit of your time, tune in uh, and uh, you know join in as well. It would be good to get a little bit of interaction. I can answer some questions, give you a shout out, etc, etc. So uh, yeah, that will be 4pm as always tomorrow. So... Let's have a look and see what the latest is looking with regards to the tropics. Globally, we do have a Hurricane Christy in the East Pacific. We've also got the, an area of interest, Trami, that has uh, impacted parts of the Philippines, bringing some uh, significant flooding uh, there. It is now moving towards Vietnam. And then we've also got the uh, Kong Ray, uh, a tropical storm in the west portion of the Pacific Basin. Looking at the latest uh, numbers for the National Hurricane uh, Atlantic Hurricane season so far, should I say the we've had the uh, fifteen named storms, ten hurricanes, and four of them major uh, category three or above. We've also had two category five hurricanes this season as well. Total damage, according to uh, estimates, uh, showing one hundred ninety point two eight six billion dollars worth of damage. And uh, it is up there now with uh, one of the most destructive hurricane seasons on record. Uh, and uh, obviously, many people will start to play during the season, saying it's been all hyped up. Well, I think it's safe to say now that um, while we've not seen the exceptional numbers that was predicted back at the beginning of the season, it certainly looks as if uh, we're up there with uh, some of the biggest impact years in terms of the United States and the amount of damage is caused. It's also been a, a very deadly hurricane season as well. We had the back-to-back major hurricanes hitting Florida, for example, causing massive, massive amounts of damage. So, uh, yeah, um, Floridians, unfortunately, for, for years to come, is, is going to be reeling from the impacts of uh, Helene and Milton. So, a couple of interesting little facts coming out of the, the last seven or so days. We did have a, a Hurricane Oscar make landfall in far eastern Cuba. That is the first day impact on Cuba as a hurricane since Matthew back in 2016. We also seen um, Hurricane Oscar uh, become the smallest hurricane on record. This is a tweet here by Michael showing that the recent Hurricane Oscar has been declared the smallest hurricane ever observed at peak intensity. Oscar had a hurricane force winds extending only 5.75 miles from the center and gale force winds only extending 35 miles out. It was so small that satellites had a very hard time estimating its true intensity. Some Canadian satellites suggest it may have been a Cat 2 or 3 near landfall in Cuba. So I believe officially it was an 80 mile per hour category 1 hurricane when it made impact on, uh, on Cuba. Also interesting is the fact that we had Nadine, I spoke about this last weekend, moving into Central America, being generally a rainmaker. It dissipated, then it regenerated and became a uh, Christy over the open East Pacific. And what's amazing about this, this became another incredibly rapid deepening system. This is a tweet here by Noah Ber Bergren. Uh, remarkable today, this is obviously going back to the 25th of October, uh, that another storm on Earth undergoing extreme intensification this tropical season. Christy, Tr Christy uh, formerly Nadine in the Caribbean, became a rare Category 5 with 160 mile per hour sustained winds in the East Pacific Ocean. Look at the clouds fanning uh, out from the centre in this high-res image. So incredible uh, how it was Nadine, it faded away over the land area of Central America, then regenerated over the warm East Pacific, became a new name and became a Category 5 storm. Thankfully, the system was well out over open waters. This is the latest IR imagery of Tropical Tidbits. This is the GO-16 
can see here that we do have a cluster of thunderstorms just to the east of uh, the Cancun Cozumel area, if you notice. But they generally quiet over both the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. We've got a flare up over the main development range in the Atlantic. We've got a frontal system here out over the open ocean as well. Uh, there is the remnants of uh, of Christie, still a hurricane, but you notice it is quite uh, you know unorganized now. Today. You notice here we've got the shear coming in from a southwesterly direction, pushing a little convection out of the north, a lack of convection on the southern side. So it's becoming less and less organized and therefore it is gradually weakening as it moves northwards. We've got an area of thunderstorm activity over the Far East Pacific as well. According to NHC, we have no threat both over the next 24 hours, but even in the next seven days, it looks as if there is a, a lack of threat within the Atlantic. And the reasons for that is quite simple, that we have got the, the hammer uh, of subsidence over the open Atlantic at the moment here. But despite that, despite the fact that we've had an unfavorable MGO large-scale subsidence over the ocean, we did see Oscar and Nadine develop very small areas of uh, low pressure, very small circulations that can develop when you've got the right conditions despite uh, an overall unfavorable environment. But you notice here that we do have quite a large area of convection over the uh, Pacific especially the central portion of the Pacific from the Dateline westwards, hence why we've got a, a couple of systems over the West Pacific. And we do have a threat over the next seven days of further development here in the far West Pacific Basin. With, <coughs> within the Atlantic, we are expecting to see uh, more favourable conditions. Sorry, choking slightly. You can see here, as we move towards the very end of the month and into early November, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you can see here that we are starting to see the MGO moving into the west uh, portion of the Atlantic Basin and with very warm SSTs and high ocean heat content, it would not surprise me if we get another two or three named systems through the first couple of weeks in November with uh, the combination of a, a, a better, more conducive environment within the atmosphere, but also those uh, still very, very warm SSTs. We've got September level level warmth over the, uh, the the far west open Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So therefore, I would expect to see uh, further threats uh, over the next day. Uh, you know, three to four weeks before the season finally ramps up and uh, our winds down, should I say? But even at that, it wouldn't surprise me, given the amount of warmth within the tropical oceans, that even as we move into the month of December. There is the possibility of a couple of systems developing, but there's less and less of a threat over the United States once you get into the month of December, which is good news given the overall pattern. It becomes a lot less favorable in terms of, uh, you know, mid and upper level winds. Uh, you know, you've got all the different things that are, are going to play against systems moving up towards the southeastern United States, the Gulf or the, up the East Coast, for example, as we move out of the month of November. Generally, once you get out of October, the threat starts to reduce more and more over mainland United States. But, you know, there, there are strange things that can happen, and therefore I wouldn't necessarily just kind of wipe everything out and say we're all safe and nothing's going to take place. But looking at the the, the Western Atlantic in terms of the, the SSTs, you can see here very, very warm compared to average through the Caribbean, we're starting to reduce the, the, the level of warmth at the surface, at least over the Gulf of Mexico, if you notice. We've still got that legacy of cool in the wake of Milton, uh, Eastern Gulf, and uh, the coastal waters around Florida, up the East Coast as well. We're seeing cooling taking place. We're also seeing it around the Louisiana coast also. So we're starting to reduce the, the level of fuel within the Gulf, but certainly the Caribbean still primed for uh, spin-ups and uh, a threat from the tropics. In terms of La Nina, we'll talk a, a little bit about hurricanes, uh, the, the models in a second here, but in terms of La Nina, we are seeing the threshold at around minus one below average. That is within a La Nina uh, category. Uh, this is Nino region 3.4, which is the area that uh, NOAA and uh, the Bureau of Meteorology look at in terms of uh, distinguishing an El Nino or La Nina or neutral conditions and certainly we are in weak La Nina territory according to the CDAS data here 
and uh, it looks as if we are going to, we have been seeing a stronger easterly trade winds. Uh, due to the MJO being in the, the Indian Ocean, we've had the stronger winds blowing across the Pacific towards that lower pressure within the Indian Ocean. But we, what we are seeing is we're seeing a little bit of uh, interference now with the, those trade winds as we move towards the final uh, the final week or so of October. And the reason why is the MJO was actually progressing across the Pacific. So therefore, we start to lose those easterly winds. Therefore, what we may see is a little bit of a break in the 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 continued development, albeit very slow, of the, the La Nina. Uh, it's kind of holding it around minus one below average over Nina region 3.4. And we don't expect it to necessarily strengthen much more over the next couple of weeks due to the MGO being in the Pacific. If you've got it over the Indian Ocean, the maritime continent, you tend to have stronger easterly trade winds blowing from sinking over the central and east Pacific, rising motion over the Indian Ocean and Indonesia. You have a stronger easterly trade wind when you've got that walker circulation positioned in that part of the world. But because we've got the MGO actually moving across the Pacific, we're losing that easterly trades, and that is seen very clearly in this 850 millibar zonal wind anomaly chart here. So, the, the, you know, we've had the strong winds, blowing from late September through the first two and a half, three weeks of uh, of October. You can see that quite clearly around the date line, progressing eastwards as the MGO strengthened over the Indian Ocean and the, the maritime continent. But you notice here that we're starting to put the brakes on. We've actually got stronger winds over the far west Pacific, but we've actually got uh, westerly winds blowing uh, over the East Pacific here. So therefore, I wouldn't expect to see much more of a strengthening or upwelling of the MGO, or, or so, should I say the colder waters below the surface, given the MGO's position at this moment in time. Looking at uh, the uh, projections of NOAA, this is uh, the current SSTs according to NOAA from the 2nd of October. So we've got the, the coldest waters at the surface towards the central Pacific, slightly warmer sea surface temperatures over the far east Pacific, if you notice here. Uh, so the weak La Nina continues. This is the SST anomalies here. So if you look at Nino Region 4, which is over the far west Pacific, you've got warmer than average sea surface temperatures. Nino Region 3, 4, we've got this gradual going from a uh, plus 1.5, 1.8, even 2 Celsius above average during Christmas of last year. That's when we had a fairly, a fairly robust El Nino in place. Then we've seen this gradual decrease in temperatures during the, the early portions of this year. Then it dropped off, really only reaching the criteria that we're at at the moment as we move out of September into the month of October here. We're generally sitting at a half degree below average, which is right on the threshold. We're going from the threshold between neutral and borderline La Nina, according to this information from NOAA. And then if you look at Nino Region 3 and Nino Region 1.2, which is closer to the Pacific, uh, the, the Far East Pacific over towards the South America, you can see here that we've got colder waters. But those waters have been kind of bouncing around between uh, slightly warmer versus slightly colder. But Nino Region 3.4 has been struggling. We've got to that threshold uh, around a half a degree below at the moment, according to this information here. And then if you look at this graphic, you can see that we're actually sitting on around about 1C below average. So uh, that would be uh, within weak La Nina territory if we can go by this uh, particular chart. So finally, looking at the models itself, uh, just bear with me one second here while I pull uh, the appropriate charts up. Let's look at the North Atlantic. We'll look at the, the GFS initial first, and obviously we'll take this with a, a large grain of salt because this is just an operational model run here. But you play through the loop here. We've got a frontal system driving southeastwards over the lower 48. We've got an increase in convection over the Caribbean as the MGO starts to move into a more favorable phase for convection and development here. We've got a couple of features developing here, one to the northeast essentially just to the northwest of the leewards, northeast of Puerto Rico here, Hispaniola. We've also got another feature in the East Caribbean developing here. 
uh, play through this loop. You can see here two features then moving north northeast as high pressure builds off the east coast of the United States. Here, these systems are kind of forced northeastwards, if you notice, according to the model here. Then there's a little bit of a turn, but it generally stays off the east coast of uh, the United States due to uh, quite a large area of high pressure and quite a colder mass moving into the uh, into the eastern half of the United States. So quite a deep trough seen by the model. This is way out to Sunday the 10th of November, obviously. Let's have a look at the, the AI model here of the ECM, uh, ECMWF and see what it's showing. So this is uh, as of uh, Wednesday the 30th of October here. Play through the loop. Is it picking up anything in particular? It does have a feature that develops out of the East Caribbean, moves north westwards here, and uh, then kind of gets stuck as we've got that lobe of colder driving into the eastern United States here. Frontal system moving off kind of protects the United States from anything trying to drift northwestwards here, and then it kind of gets pulled out into the open North Atlantic. Looking at the, the more important GFS ensemble model real quick here, and you can see that the environment becomes a, a little bit better organized. We'll have a lower pressure starting to develop. We've got strong high pressure at the moment over the western portion of the Atlantic Basin. You notice here it kind of fades slightly, but it does it show lower pressure. It does have lower pressure starting to show up High pressure uh, over the eastern United States here, but notice here that we go from from high pressure uh, at the moment through the Caribbean and the Gulf due to that large scale subsidence to lower pressure as we move through the first week of November in the week two of November here. So you notice here that we start to lower the heights over this region here as we build the pressure to the north, and therefore you would expect to start to see the environment becoming more conducive. You've got the warmer than average sea surface temperatures within the Caribbean of September level. Then as you, you reverse the pressure pattern from high pressure to lower pressure, then that opens up the door at least to something trying to spin up underneath that ridge of high pressure. So we'll need to keep an eye on this going forward and see if we can get any spin-ups. I think that the threat for the United States is gradually starting to ease as the pattern becomes less conducive for systems pulling into the, the United States. But again, we cannot rule out anything just yet. We're still in the month of October. We've got the month of November and funny things can happen, especially when you've got so much warm fuel within the oceans and an MJO that is moving into the West Pacific, uh, the West Atlantic Basin, sorry. So, uh, so yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. Join me tomorrow for the live stream. Like and subscribe. You know the drill and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.